uh, Kasari Khan Lord Nepal, right? And uh, it was a great learning process. Whatever he did, he did with complete divorce. And one of the things I learned was how to devote yourselves to a cause, to an issue, right? And this is what we have been doing. Then the second thing, very interesting thing he taught us was how to lead a very systematic and a disciplined life. A very disciplined man always. I was shot here today and this is a part of our discipline. But my father used to tell me your, your hair should never touch your ears. This is what. And every, every, every fourth Sunday he will call Sadhu Hajar, a barber, a local barber, and said that all these four boys need to have this kind of short hair. And he used to protest, but no. And, and now whenever this hair touches my ears, then I feel, oh, I'm sick. But it's discipline. In the morning, whenever you used to go out, he used to say, what are you going to do for the day? And he used to, we used to say, oh, I'm going to play. No, he said, make a routine. So then in the morning, we'll make a list about what we are going to do. And that list is so very useful. Today also, every morning I sit down and make my list. I, this, today I'm going to do this, 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 this. So it made our life very, very comfortable also. The third very interesting thing he taught us was to help the hapless people. But how do you help them. You can help them verbally, you can help them physically, you can help them materially, right? And it will start right from the next room. Like, you know, going out when there is some kind of a disaster, going out, helping people, you know, talking to them, eating food with them, bringing them home, giving them something, you know, how to help. Helping them in their studies, helping them in this, so this he taught us. And this really remains with many of us today also. The fourth thing which he taught us was, he taught us to live a very simple life. And more importantly, a very liberal thinking. You know, one of the things he told us was, you all must appreciate all religions, all communities, food, all communities, cultures, their social lives, right? Their etiquettes, their manners, and all. That. And today, uh, when we when we when we have all kinds of things in our family, when we're celebrating all kinds of occasions with equal gaiety, many people think that, oh, what kind of family is this? But again, it's a tradition. It, well, it is a very liberal way of living life. Appreciate good things in life. Appreciate all the religious, all the, all the all the all the values in your life. Right. The fifth thing he taught was how to live a fearless life. Right. I always feel that he taught us that we should be very very fearless in our attitudes. When uh, you know there are several incidents when he when he saw when he, he when he manifested very clearly that. How fearless was this? One of the incidents which, uh, which I have written also in some of the newspapers was this very famous uh, statue of uh, Mangwalta Acharya, the, the first Nepali poet who translated uh, Ramayana uh, into Nepali, right? The Vanuvakta's bust, which was done in, in mid-1920s, was, well, there was a very very bad phase of you know cultural situation in Darjeeling where there was a clear division between Gorkhas and Nepalis and all kinds of things, very artificial divisions. And on one fine morning some of his colleagues came and told him, look, the bust where you celebrated your Anujayanti every year is now stolen. It has been cut down and it has been stolen and there is no bust. And all of us used to go there as a symbol of unity. So then I, was, I happened to be there at home those times and my father told me, look, they have done this damage to our, uh, our, to our poet, to our great poet, so we must not keep quiet. Then uh, in the afternoon we had a meeting at Nepati side, the Sammelan, I think he was the president at that time, and all of us came together and we condemned 
right? The people we knew, the people who did it, at least individuals we didn't know, but we knew the gang who did this, right? Very well. And uh, we decided that uh, we are going to uh, oppose this in a very minimal manner because the other side was very powerful politically. And very interestingly, one of these friends, friends suggested that uh, Dazu, you should carry a kukri with you now because your life is in danger. Right? For the first time. And the next day my father says, Hey, somebody told me yesterday to carry a kukri, so I'm carrying a kukri with me. For the first time. We are such a, such a simple person. He carried a kukri and kukri naturally was quite a, had a good weight. He carried it for three, three days and on the fourth day in the morning he says, Hey, you know, after carrying this kukri, I feel more insecure. <laughs> then I said, why? He says, you know, without kukri, I was better, I was safe and secure. So what do you think? I said, you always. Then he said, okay, I will not carry this. Then he decided, along with his colleagues, very distant with his colleagues, they are all here today, I am so very proud that this particular gang, right, vandalized the bust of Bhadavakta Acharya. What we will do is, we will do the full statue of Bhadavakta Acharya. And today you see that full statue here. If they raised money, people donated, possibly the Bengal government also donated money for this. And they did it by, this was done a very, by a very famous Bengali sculpture. And he knew it. And when he, when he did it, this was done uh, somewhere about 300 kilometers from this place. Then when he did it, he called me to say that, now tell me, how do you mount this statue here? Because this is very heavy. Then he had seen in Dajit, in Delhi, he had seen one or two statues, you know, in Tinmurti and all these places, he had seen these statues well mounted on a platform. Then he asked me, why don't you inquire about that? And you let me know. Then I called, I went around in Delhi and found out that this was done by a crane. It was mounted with the help of a crane. I called him and said, Apa, this was uh, done through a crane. Then he says, how do you get a crane in Dajit? So he said, then I said, also in military work. So he called military, brought military crane and mounted it there. Right? Then he said, now the people of Dajit are so contented with the statue. Nobody could really touch it. But such was the fearlessness. Everybody thought that he would be killed, his friends would be killed because the political situation was like that. Then the last thing which I learned from him was how to build an institution. This is a great, uh, you know, trait uh, which we inherited, some of us, about the value of institution. How do you build institution? How do you sustain institution? How do you respect institution? How you build, how you include, make it, institutions inclusive, bring all communities, all caste, and how do you make in an institution which is nationally oriented, which is globally targeted. This is what we talk. So we thought, so many things.